Hey guys, so now it's time to talk about word embeddings and this embedding layer and then what the global average pooling 1D layer is doing. Now we already have an idea of what these dense layers are with these activation functions like ReLU and Sigmoid, but what we're actually going to do today, or I guess just in this video, is talk about the architecture of this network, kind of how it works on a high level understanding, and then in the next video what we'll do is actually get into training and using the network. So what I'm going to do first is just start by talking about these first two layers and specifically what this embedding layer is because it's very important. And then we will draw the whole network or the whole, I guess network is the right word, way to put it, the whole architecture and talk about how it fits together and what it's actually doing. So let's get started. Now, the easiest way to kind of explain this is to use an example of two very similar sentences. So I'm just going to say uh, the first sentence is have a great day and the next sentence will be have a good day now I know my handwriting is horrible so just give me a break on that um, it's also hard to kind of write with this tablet so that's my excuse but anyways these two sentences looking at them as human beings we can tell pretty quickly that they're very similar now yes great and good maybe one has more emphasis on having an amazing day whatever it is but they're very similar and they pretty well have the same meaning right maybe we know when we would use the sentence uh, and kind of the context in which like these words great and good are used and day and day and all this right it just we understand what they are now the computer doesn't have that same understanding at least right off the bat when looking at these two sentences now in our case, we've actually integer encoded all of our different values. So what we end up having, or all of our different words, sorry, is our sentences end up looking something like this. So we're gonna have this first word will represent a zero, a will be one, great will be two, and day will be three. So then down here we'll have zero, one. In this case, we're gonna say good is four, and day is three as well. So this means if we integer encode these sentences, we have some lists that look something like this. Now this one clearly is the first sentence, and this one down here will be the second sentence. Now, if we just look at this and we pretend that, you know, we don't even know what these words actually are, all we can really tell is the fact that two is different from four. Now, notice what I just said there. Two is different from four. When in reality, if we look at these two words, we know that they're pretty similar. Yes, they're different words. Yes, they're different lengths, whatever it is. But we know that they have a similar meaning. And the context in which they're used in this sentence is the same. Now, our computer obviously doesn't know that because all it gets to see is this. So what we want to do is try to get it to have an understanding of words that have similar meanings and to kind of group those together in a similar form or in a similar way. Because obviously in our application here of classifying movie reviews, the types of words that are used and the context in which they are used really makes a massive difference to trying to classify that as either a positive or a negative review. And if we look at great and good and we say that these are two completely different words, well, that's going to be a bit of an issue when we're trying to do some classification. So this is where our embedding layer comes in. Now, again, uh, just to say here one more time, like we know these are different, but we also would know, for example, say if we replace this four with a three, well, all our computer again would know is that two is different from three, just like four is different from two. It doesn't know how different they are. And that's what I'm trying to get at here is our embedding layer is going to try to group words in a similar kind of way so that we know which ones are similar to each other. So let me now talk about specifically the embedding layer. So let me just draw a little grid here. Now, what our embedding layer actually does kind of like, I don't want to say the formal definition, but the more mathy definition is it finds word vectors for each word that we pass it, or it generates word vectors and uses those word vectors uh, to pass to the future layers. Now, a word vector can be in any kind of dimensional space. Now, in this case, we've picked 16 dimensions for each word vector, which means that we're going to have vectors, maybe something like this. And a vector, again, is just a straight line with a bunch of different coefficients in some kind of space um, that is, in this case, 16 dimensions. So let's pretend that this is a 16 dimensional vector and this is the word vector for the word have. Now, in our computer, it wouldn't actually be have, it would be zero because, again, we have integer encoded stuff but you kind of you get the point so we'll say this is the word vector for half now what we're going to do immediately when we create this embedding layer is let me actually get out of this quickly for one second is we initially create 
10,000 word vectors for every single word, or in this case, every single number that represents a word. So what we're gonna do is when we start creating this uh, embedding layer, we see that we have an embedding layer, is we're gonna draw 10,000 word vectors in just kind of some random way that are just there. And each one represents one word. And what happens when we call the embedding layer is it's gonna grab all of those word vectors for whatever input we have and use that as the data that we pass on to the next layer. Now, how do we create these word vectors and how do we group words? Well, this is where it gets into a bit complicated math. I'm not really gonna go through any equations or anything like that, but I'll kind of give you an idea of how we do it. Now, we wanna, so let me get rid of this word have because this is not the best word vector example. And let's say that this word vector is great. Now, upon creating our word vector, our embedding layer, we have two vectors, we have great and we have good. And we can see that these vectors are kind of far apart from each other. And we determine that by looking at the angle between them. And we say that this angle, maybe it's like, I don't know, 70 degrees or something like that. And we can kind of determine that great and good are not that close to each other. But in reality, we want them to be pretty close to each other. We want the computer to look at great and good and be like, these are similar words. Let's treat them similarly in our neural network. So what we want to do, hopefully, is have these words and these vectors kind of move closer together, whether it's good going all the way to great or great going all the way to good or vice versa, right? We just want them to get close together and kind of be in some form of a group. So what we do is we try to look at the context in which these words are used rather than just the content of the words, which would just be what this looks like. We want to figure out how they how they're used. So we'll look at the words around it and determine that, you know, when we have a and day and a and day, maybe that means that these are like related in some way. And then we'll try to group these words. Now, it's way more complicated than that. Don't get me wrong, um, but it's kind of like a very basic way of how they group together is we look at the words that surround it um, and just different properties of the sentence involving that word and then we can kind of get an idea of where these words go and which ones are close to each other so maybe after we've done some training uh, what happens is our word embeddings are what is known as learned um, just like we're learning and teaching our neural network and we get we end up getting great and good very close together and these are what their word vector representations are we can tell that they're close again by looking at the angle in between here maybe it's like 0 0.2 degrees and what that means is these two vectors which are just a bunch of numbers essentially are very close together so when we feed them into our neural network they should hopefully give us a, a similar output at least for that specific neuron that we give it to now, I know this might be a little bit confusing, but I'm going to go, we're going to talk about this a bit more with another drawing of the whole network, but I hope you're getting the idea that the whole point of this embedding layer is to make word vectors that, and then group those word vectors or kind of like make them close together based on words that are similar and that are different. So again, just like we would have great and good here, we would hope that a word vector like bad would be down here where it has a big difference from great and good so that we can tell that these words are not related whatsoever. All right, so that's how the embedding layer works. Now, what ends up happening when we have this embedding layer is we get an output dimension of what's known as 16 dimensions. And that's just how many coefficients essentially we have for our vector. So just like if you have a 2D line, so like if this is our grid in 2D and we say that this is X and this is Y, we can represent any line by just having like uh, some values like AX plus BY equals C. Now, this is the exact same thing that we can do in, in n dimensions, which means like any amount of dimensions. So for a 16 dimensional line, I'm not going to draw them all, but we would start with like AX plus BY plus CZ plus DW and so on. And we would just have, again, 16 of these coefficients and then some kind of constant value. Uh, maybe we call it Lambda. That is like what it's what it equals to, what the equation equals to. And that's how we define a line. I'm pretty sure I'm doing this correctly in uh, in n dimensions. So anyways, once we create that line, what we actually want to do is we want to scale the dimension down a little bit. Now, that's just because 16 dimensions is a lot of data, especially when we have like a ton of different words coming into our network. We want to scale it down to make it a little bit easier to actually um, compute and to train our network. So that's where this global average pooling 1D layer comes in. Now, I'm not going to talk about this in too depth, in too much depth, but essentially the way to think of the global average pooling 1D is that it just takes whatever dimension our data is in and just 
puts it in a lower dimension. Now, there's a specific way that it does that, but again, I'm not going to talk about that, and it's not super important. If you care about that a lot, just look it up, and it, it's not like crazy hard, but I just I don't feel the need to go into it in this video. So anyways, let's now start drawing what our network actually looks like after understanding how this embedding layer works. So we're going to initially feed in a sequence and we'll just say that this is like our sequence of encoded words. Okay. So we'll say this is our input and maybe it's something like zero, seven, nine, like a thousand, two hundred, a thousand twenty. Uh, we have like nine again. Maybe we have eight, like just a bunch of different essentially numbers, right? So we're going to pass this into our embedding layer. And all this is going to do is it's going to find the uh, representation of these words in our embedding layer. So maybe our embedding layer, well, it's going to have the same amount of words in our vocabulary. So it'll look up, say zero, it'll say maybe zero means zero's vector is like 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and it goes to 16 dimensions, but I'm just going to do like two for this example here. Maybe seven, its vector is like seven and 9.0. And it just keeps going like this and it looks up all these vectors. So it takes all of our input data and it just turns them into a bunch of vectors and just spits those out into our next layer. Now our next layer, what this does is it just takes these vectors and just averages them out. And it just means it kind of shrinks them their data down. So we'll do like a little smaller thing here and we'll just say um, like average, okay? So we'll call this one embedding and that one is average. Now this average layer now is where we go into the actual neural network. Well, obviously this is a neural network, but we go into the dense layers, which will actually perform our classification. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with 16 neurons. And this is just, again, an arbitrary number that we've picked um, for our network. You can mess around with different values for this. And I encourage you to do that. But 16 is what TensorFlow decided to use and what I'm just following along with. So we're going to have 16 neurons. And we're going to pass all of our now 16 dimensional data or whatever dimensional data it is into these neurons like this. Now, this is where we start um, doing the dense layer. So we have this dense layer and this is connected to one output neuron like this. So what we end up having is this embedding layer, which is going to have all these word vectors that represent different words. We average them out we pass them into this 16 um, neuron layer that then goes into an output layer, which will spit out a value between zero and one using the sigmoid function, which I believe I have to correct myself because in other videos I said it did between negative one and one. It just takes any value we have and puts it in between zero and one like that. All right. So that is kind of how our network works. So let me talk about what this dense layer is doing just a little bit before we move on to the next video. So what this dense layer is going to attempt to do essentially is look for patterns of words and try to classify them using the same methods we talked about before uh, into either a positive review or a negative review. I'm going to take all these word vectors, which again are going to be like similarly grouped words like great, good are going to be similar input to this dense layer, right? Because we've um, averaged them out and embedded them in all this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to try to determine based on what words we have and what order they come in, what our text is. And we hope that this layer of 16 neurons is able to pick up on patterns of certain words and where they occur in the sentence and give us a accurate classification. Again, it's going to do that by tweaking and modifying these weights and all of the biases that are on, you know, all of these different, what do you call it? Layers or all of these connections or whatever they are. And then it's going to give us some output and some level of accuracy for our network. So I hope that I explain that decently in terms of how the word embeddings work. Again, I always encourage you guys to ask me questions in the comments below. Um, if you know the answer or maybe I didn't explain something clearly enough, please do me a favor, go down and help me out, explain it to people that maybe don't understand it or make sure that I'm you know, not butchering any of these explanations because just like you guys, I'm learning as well. And this is what I feel confident in and this is what I think everything is, but I can always make mistakes just like everyone else. So anyways, that has been it for this video. I hope you guys have a little bit of an understanding on when we would use a word embedding layer, how the average pooling works and how this network is kind of going to react in the next video when we start training it.